Thank you for watching this video. Please click on the like and subscribe buttons so that I can continue to make more videos like this. The next sheet on our set of drawings is sheet A 2.3 and that is the furniture floor plan. And if we take a look, the scale is one quarter of an inch is equal to one foot. The most important thing we're going to get out of this is how the furniture is laid out on this plan. We start to get an indication of where we might be putting some plugs or some data ports. This page is more important in a system where you use an office cubicle setup where you have a more of a fixed furniture situation and they have drops on power poles and things like that. And it's important because you do not want to put your junction boxes in a place where you can't get on a ladder and have accessibility to them because the furniture is in your way. So in other words, if you had a situation like this and if this was modular furniture, you might want to put your junction box out here and then have a bend over uh, here to, to run down if you had furniture drops. Now of course this is uh, going to be uh, the power and stuff is going to be an underground for this on this print and we'll get to that later. But the idea if it was a power pull and drops, you'd say you want to have your a junction box out here and then flex it to the power pull. And again, power poles have a flex whip on them. And, but you'd be able to have accessibility to your junction box out here away from the furniture. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have a setup like that, put your junction boxers where you have accessibility to them. And that's basically all we need this page for. So let's go to the next sheet. The next sheet that we're going to work with is sheet A 2.4 and that is the finished floor plan. And again the scale is one quarter of an inch is equal to one foot. Look in the top right corner of this page and you'll see finish legend. And it also says see sheet A 2.6 for finish schedule. Now we're going to get to sheet A 2.6 very shortly and these two pages work together quite a bit with each other and you might have to flip back and forth between them. What I want you to note on this, we have these boxes here like in Office 102 it says CPT-1 and if we go up to our finished legend up here that says Office Carpet and over here in the reception area it says TL-1 and our finished legend says that that is Tile. This is important because these are different thicknesses. Remember our abbreviations AFF means above finished floor. So a tile floor is going to be typically thicker than a carpeted floor. And when you have to put in your receptacles, your light switches and things like that, your dimension is given to be a certain dimension above the finished floor. And where this becomes important is when you get into like a restroom situation because they often have tile on the floor. This one says CFT1 and that means ceramic floor tile. Well, ceramic tile is typically a half inch or so thick and you've got mortar underneath it. I've been on certain jobs where the light switch is put in or there's a plug that goes over a cabinet and the bottom of the plug is overlapping the top of the backsplash. So the person didn't take into account the tile on the finished floor. And of course it would have been nice if the plug was up a little higher anyway to avoid that. Now we spoke earlier about looking at the millwork pages where you can look at the backsplashes. We also looked at another diagram earlier and we found that we had some tile on a wall. So that would affect our plaster ring. So you're starting to get an idea of how all of these things can work together. So you have to coordinate this with all the other pages, the floor, furniture, and uh, your electrical print on your dimensioning for putting in the, uh, especially the heights of your, uh, your junction boxes. That is the most important thing I believe that we'll be getting out of this page right here. We're going to see the finished legend, which is mostly for the floor, and it also gives for the wall type, and we've been going over uh, the walls and the thicknesses of the uh, coverings on the walls, but you get it for the floor height and you'll be able to coordinate that with the millwork. That is the most useful component that we get off the finished floor plan. So now it's time to go to the next sheet.
The next sheet on our drawing is A 2.5 door and window schedule. Now we've already dealt with this page earlier, but let's look at this page as a whole unit instead of the components of it. And oftentimes you may not even have this page on your electrical drawings because you don't always use it a lot and you might even have to get this information from the general contractor on their set of prints. The good thing about it here, it just kind of helps us learn how to navigate through the prints and also teaches us how to learn some of the things that other trades have to deal with, which is going to help expand our knowledge on blueprint reading. So it basically has the door schedule, which we got into earlier. It'll give the door number, the location, which we talked about, the type of door. And here in the middle, we have door types. And on this job, there are three door types. So you've got A, B, or C the width of the door, the height, the thickness, the type of material of the door. And again, we have abbreviations over here for the type of material. And we worked with a solid core wood door earlier. So we have the, the window schedule also here. And again, we needed this mostly for D and E because there's going to be some decorative kind of window walls installed in this project. The exterior windows are already in place. We don't have to deal with them or anything. But we have to watch out for the ones that are on the inside and make sure we don't run any conduit through that area. This is page A 2.5 in, in a nutshell, and it's not something you're going to use an awful lot, but it's nice to know how to use it if you do need to use it. So it's time to go on to the next page. The next page in our drawing is page a 2.6, the finish schedule. Now we talked about this when we were back on page A 2.4, the finished floor plan. I believe the most important part about this page is up here where it has the room finish schedule. And if we go over here we can see room number and the room name so we can find a certain location on this page and then it gives the floor description. So in room 100, the reception area, the floor is TL1. And remember we talked about that when we were on page 2.4. Now if we come over to this side and look here, it says tile and it has TL1. And it gives a description of it, it gives the manufacturer, the style, the model number is missing here, but it gives the color, the size, and the finished notes. Now it doesn't give the thickness of the tile. Now, this information you'll be able to find from the general contractor. He'll have a more extensive book in his trailer with that. If you really needed to, you could contact the manufacturer and find that out. And remember, we talked about above finished floor on certain details, and the tile is going to have a certain thickness. So this is something that you're going to want to know the thickness of. Uh, 110 and 111, the men's and women's restrooms, CFT1. So under tile CFT1, Again, we got the manufacturer, we have the style, we have the model number this time. The color, the size is 2.2, but it doesn't, again, give a thickness. So again, you'll be able to find that either from the general contractor or from the manufacturer. Typically, you're not going to have to go to the manufacturer. That's not really your job, unless you're at the foreman level and you're doing that kind of work. They'll have that information for you. But at least with this, you'll be able to quickly go and determine how the rooms are being finished. Down here, uh, note 4, it's got transition details. And these are just uh, kind of interesting for personal information. It tells how to go from, say, tile to carpet or concrete to carpet up here. And just look that over for your own knowledge and just to kind of get an idea of how other trades do their craft. So that does it for us on page A 2.6, the finish schedule. The next sheet in our set of drawings is sheet A 4.1, millwork elevations. Now you might be wondering, why did we jump from A 2.6 to A 4.1? Well, for the electrician, we don't need the sheets in between. And again, if you want to look at those, you can go to the general contractor's comprehensive set of prints that he has in his trailer. But this is the sheet that the electricians get, and that's what this lesson is mainly concerned with. Now, we talked about this sheet earlier when we were back on sheet A2.2 on the floor plan. 
we were looking at millwork elevations and specifically we were looking at this area down here 112A in the uh, the break room area. We learned some things about some uh, electrical installation we had to do these boxes here with the E on them. What I want you to do is to look up here at this point in time 101A the millwork elevation at conference room 101. Let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so here we are taking a closer look at the millwork elevation at conference room 101. And again, we have an ellipse here with 101A, and you'll find that back on another page, which will tell you to look at this detail. And if we look at note 8 over here in the key notes, it says electrical and data outlets, see electrical drawings. And here we have an E and a D, and each one has a little square in it. Now we talked about the E earlier, and that was back on the equipment abbreviations on sheet A, 0 0.1, that meant a uh, electrical uh, installation of a duplex outlet. Well, a D stands for a data port, which could be like a, a computer terminal, or for uh, communications, telephone, or whatever. So that's the first time we see the D in there. And again, the most important thing that we get out of this uh, page in this millwork is that you don't want to install these where you have uh, a cabinet uh, partition wall that divides these cabinet doors or whatever. So you're going to get the dimension to lay this out on your electrical drawings, and you're going to want to put those on the closest stud. However, you have to make sure that that stud uh, does not uh, put your your device right at the partition wall here and you it may be that you have to put an auxiliary piece of support in between two studs in order to hold these in between there if, if it happens that these partition walls are close enough together because you need to get these uh, outlets and data ports in here so that the person that has to be here can use that as a workstation so that's the most important thing I believe we get out of this page is to help us coordinate any kind of electrical and data devices that uh, that are inside of cabinets or close to millwork or things of that nature. It's time to go on to our next sheet. The next sheet we're going to look at is sheet A 4.2 millwork sections. And basically, these are side views of the cabinets in, in the millwork. And you can cross-reference this with the previous page, sheet A4.1. I guess the thing you could get out of here the most, if you had a situation where you had a plug that somehow had to be in the side of a cabinet, and you didn't want that to interfere with a shelf or a, a party wall within the side of that cabinet, you could look at it this way. But there's also something else that I want you to look at here. It's up in this section right here. So let's take a closer look at detail number two, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so here we are in detail number two. I want you to note that the scale is inch and a half equals one foot. Now, this drawing has quite a lot of given dimensions, and of course those take precedence over a scale dimension. We talked about earlier, if you have a cabinet and then above it there's a backsplash and then you have a plug above and you want to make sure that the plug height is a, doesn't enter, get into this backsplash. So you have to take into account your finished floor and you have a note 6 here, it says schedule flooring. So you have to check the floor schedule to see what the thickness of that floor is. And then you've got the height of the cabinet with dimensions. Now here, it's not given on this cabinet, but we can add up. We've got four inches, and we can add the elevations. And typically, they're going to be the same height as the other cabinets. So you can look on the page and find another cabinet that goes next to it, and you can pull a dimension off of that. And on this one above it, it's just two feet ten inches. So look above it, and you'll find two feet ten inches given as the height. But again, now that height is only to here. We still have the backsplash. So to get the height of the backsplash, we would have to scale that off. So how are we going to do that? Well, here's the way. If you have to scale something, scale it in the most accurate way possible, which means 
take the drawing with the most detail. So this one, where we have an inch and a half equals a foot, use that to scale it as opposed to a drawing where an eighth of an inch equals a foot. Now you're given here that this distance is six inches, and so you can see that this one here, by eyeballing, is a little less than this. It's probably four inches, which is a common dimension for a backsplash, but you, again, you could get a ruler and measure this and scale it off and compare it to this and do a little math, find the proportion of it, and see that it's probably about four inches. And then you would add that four inches to your two feet ten, which becomes three feet two inches, which would be thirty-eight inches to the very top of the backsplash above finished floor, and that would mean that the bottom of your outlet box would have to be above that, and you'd even want to give it some more room because remember your cover plate is, is going to be a little bit be below that as well. This is just a good way to double check some dimensions if you want to, and again it's, it's not really an electrical page, but it gives you some information if you absolutely had to have it to find some cabinet heights. It's just another place to look for some information that could help you. And that does it for us on sheet A 4.2. We're working with sheet A 5.1, Enlarged Plans and Elevations. We were here earlier when we were looking at sheet A 2.2, the floor plan, and we looked here at detail 11, and then we looked at note 11, and we found that this tile height would be four feet above the finished floor. And we learned that we have to uh, be aware of that because if there's a countertop and there's a GFI plug above it or for a light switch this is get, getting close to where we have to install those devices so that could affect the work that we have to do. Now what I want to do is focus our attention in the bottom left hand corner here and I want to point some things out. So let's take a closer look at detail 10 in the bottom left corner right now. So we're looking here at Detail 10, Enlarged Reflected Ceiling Plan at restrooms 110 and 111. Now I want to point out here Note 1, and in our key notes here it says, Recessed Can Light Fixture, See Electrical Drawings. And so we have here, here, and here, and again Note 1 here, and here, and here, we have light fixtures. Notice something here, this says, 11 inches for a dimension, then 3 foot 6, 4 foot 1, 2 foot 6. We have three light fixtures and they are not evenly spaced. And if we look at the fixtures on this side, they are not evenly spaced either. It, if you told someone typically to put three light fixtures here, they might just automatically evenly space them. And the reason that they're set at these distances is there's a sink and there's, and we can look up uh, on another part of our prints, and one is going to be over a lavatory, and one is going to be over a urinal, and one over a sink. So they're centered on the plumbing fixtures that way. What typically happens is you actually wait till those fixtures get installed, and if they're off by a little bit, then you center your fixture, uh, your light fixture, over that plumbing fixture. So keep that in mind. It's not an automatic even spacing with these uh, fixtures. Note three, which is right here and here, that says gypsum board ceiling with painted finish. This tells us we have what is called a hard lid ceiling. And that is important when it comes to accessibility. If you have a junction box, you must have accessibility to it, ready accessibility, which means at the very least you can get on a ladder and just reach over at one arm's length from an area. Now this is the break room and it has a tile ceiling, which means that we can pop a tile out here stick our head up through a ladder and reach over. So with these the lights here, we know we have to have a light switch and there's an exhaust fan also here and here. So we, that's controlled by the switch as well. That means that either from our panel when we pull our home run, the first junction box must either be to the switch or to a junction box out here so that you can have accessibility to it and then it can go into the switch to start that. And then of course when you run conduit, you can't have more than 360 degrees in a run without having another point of accessibility like a junction box or a conduit body. So that is something you need to keep in mind. 
And of course, uh, as we go through the plans, this hard lid ceiling will be pointed out in other places, but just get used to the idea that you're going to have redundancy, and we've tried to point that out earlier. When you have a situation like this, as you go through the plans, you're going to start to see things. This will put this in your mind, and you should start thinking about accessibility and things like that. So that concludes sheet A 5.1 for us. The next sheet we're going to look at is sheet A 5.2, Interior Elevations. If we look at the top section here on uh, detail 8, on note 4 it says gypsum board soffit, see reflected ceiling plans sheet A 6.1. Now note 4 is right here and it's talking about this area right here. And it's the same note 4 down here talking about this area. There's going to be a soffit and it's going to be a hard lid soffit. But this will have accessibility from the room where you can just pop a tile and reach over it pretty easily. In both of those soffits we have to put some lighting. And that is shown on the electrical pages. But I also want to point out here for one uh, it mentions the re reflected ceiling plan again, and that's going to be the next sheet that we get to. But this page, we really don't gain an awful lot from it. And you will find that sometimes in your, your uh, set of blueprints. You might get some pages and ask yourself, why did they give us this page? Well, just be glad that you have it and don't need it, and you're not in the situation where you need it and don't have it. So that really concludes sheet A 5.2 for us. So let's go on now to the reflected ceiling plan, sheet A 6.1. The sheet we're working with now is sheet A 6.1, the reflected ceiling plan. And we've made reference to this sheet quite a few times, so now we're finally getting to use it. And this is a, a very, very useful page on your blueprints, and there's a lot of important things here. This is really starting to get into the very, very heart of this lesson. Where scale is one quarter inch equals one foot. This is a detailed look at the ceiling. And this really shows things if you have power posts or cord drops that come in from the ceiling. Uh, now this build out doesn't have anything like that. However, th this is going to be the place where you're going to start finding things like that that need some very special types of installations. Now, this plan, uh, this page I should say, is mostly useful for finding your lighting and helping you in the placement of those. So let's take a look at uh, some of those things. Now, if you remember earlier, near the front of our prints, we, we talked about the RCP legend. And it's repeated here for us so we don't have to flip between pages. We also have the wall legend as well. And you remember we talked about this wall here, CMU with the furring. And there it is again right there for us. Let's take a look at some of our uh, lighting. If we look at this fixture right here, 1x4 fluorescent chain hung wraparound. It's down here in room 114, the janitor's closet. And that's the only place that that fixture is used. And here we have some 2x4 lay-ins, which means they're going to go in uh, a grid ceiling. And here's what we can see. These are grids with this acoustical tile. You see it oftentimes in commercial installations. So you have a grid ceiling. Now here we don't have these grid squares. And we have a note 3. So we go up to our key notes. Gypsum board ceiling with painted finish. This tells us that we have a hard lid ceiling. And we talked about that earlier. And here we are in the restrooms. We have a hard lid ceiling. We have the soffit we talked about, hard lid ceiling. Here's where you get the, to look at things like that, and you can look at your accessibility that you have. And the reflected ceiling plan is a very, very good place to find those kind of things. Now, let's take a look here on the, uh, the lighting legend here. Recessed can light fixtures, see electrical drawings. Well, remember earlier in the restrooms, we talked about some recessed can fixtures, and here they are. And here we see a, quite a few more of those throughout the job. So you're going to have to keep in mind that you have a hard lid ceiling. They're pretty easy to install here. Now you've got to install them in a grid tile, so you're going to need to get a support that's going, that is going to allow you to do that.
Let's look at another thing here. Let's go back here to the uh, women's and men's restrooms here. If you look at this little square box, it says plus nine feet above finished floor. So that is how high the ceiling is going to be. Uh, if you go to the break room right here, it says plus ten feet above finished floor. Okay, and here we are. This is a soffit. This note actually points down to this soffit area, eight feet above finished floor. Here we are in this other office that has that hard lid ceiling and it says 10 feet above finished floor. So the reflected ceiling plan will tell you the finished height of the ceiling. And this is important. Remember, if you have a stub out of a conduit, it has to go six inches above the, the finished ceiling height. And that was given to us in, in our notes. I want to point out something else here. We have this circle on, the, on top. It's got a five and an A9.2 and it's talking about this area right here. So if you go to page A9.2, detail 5, it will give explanation of this. And we can see that it's 9 feet above finished floor, and this is 10 feet above finished floor in the conference room. This is kind of a drop ceiling, and this is actually a projector. And they want a projector screen in here. And the details of how that is built is going to be on page uh, A9.2 detail 5 and you can see here one if we go to our key notes that's the gypsum board soffit with painted finish so we know that's a hard ceiling now these light fixtures you can see there's a grid here you can get on a ladder and easily reach over so accessibility is not going to be a problem in this installation however if we look back here at the restrooms look at this whole entire area accessibility if we wanted to put in the junction box we need, we could go right here for a junction box for the lighting in here, and that's something to think about as well. Also, start thinking about accessibility for your power, because again, the same with the junction boxes for the power, they must be accessible as well. So you've got accessibility here, or possibly here, if you can get a conduit all the way over, like here's going to be a light switch here light switch here and also by the light switch you'll have a switch for the exhaust fan in each of those rooms. So those are some things you need to keep in mind and the reflected ceiling plan is a good place for you to look to find that kind of information. We've looked in here and we can see we have the room heights here and we've pointed these out. This is 9 feet and 9 feet and it's 10 feet here and it's 9 feet in this drop ceiling. These offices are 10 feet and so on. What I want to point out to you is earlier we were on sheet A 2.6, the finish schedule, and if you look there's a chart entitled room finish schedule. And you can go to each one of these rooms and it will give you the above finished floor height. And I want you to pause this video right now, turn back to sheet A 2.6, and just look at some of these rooms and see, uh, compare the room heights that you find there to what's on the reflected ceiling print. Check out the restrooms. Check out the hallway. It's here. It's 8 feet 8 inches above finish floor. Check out the conference room and see if you can find this drop ceiling in there. So do that right now. Pause the video. Go to sheet A 2.6 and just, and remember how we taught you earlier how to to go back and forth between pages on the blueprints and how to handle them carefully. Get some practice doing that. Comparing this uh, sheet A6.1 with sheet A2.6. So now we're back and you looked at sheet A2.6 and hopefully you found the same information as far as the room heights. Now we're going to go to another page again, which we haven't been to yet. We want to look down in this corner of this page, room 107. We have some lights here, and notice in between here, and notice in between we have lights here and lights here. Now, we want to go to the mechanical pages and see how this coordinates with the mechanical pages. So, we're going to go forward to page M, 1.1, the mechanical floor plan. So let's do that right now.
Okay, so we've gone forward a few pages to page M1.1, the mechanical floor plan. So it's scale, one quarter inch equals one foot, the same scale as a reflected ceiling plan. Now, I want to concentrate on this area of the plan right here. So we're going to, so we're going to go to a close-up shot of that area. Okay, so we, we're at a uh, close-up here at the, at the bottom right corner of the building as we look at our sheet. And look in here, in this office, we have a duct, a two by two, it's going to be an air duct, in between these two light fixtures. And if we go up to this next office here, we have the same situation where this duct has to fit between these two lights. Now that's a very common occurrence in commercial construction. The thing I want to point out is, oftentimes when you run your conduit for lights, you, you want to be running these in between each other. Well, we've got this duct work. And if we have any junction boxes, we have to clear all of this ductwork and have accessibility to any of our junction boxes. Now, typically, the mechanical work is uh, going to be done before you get there. But if it's not, you're going to have to lay this out. So you're going to have to see how they have to, to put their installation in. And in this particular building, there was a big truss running the length over these offices. But these ducts are very close to that. So you have to decide and measure and see can I use the side of the truss, the left side, the right side, or the bottom for any kind of support for conduit or junction boxes. So this is something you have to keep in mind. This is pretty similar to the reflected ceiling plan as you can see the ceiling grid uh, laid out like this and you have lights. But you get to look uh, with the reflected ceiling plan Go to the uh, mechanical floor plan as well. See where you have your drop-ins for your ducts and, and see where you have your larger equipment as well. Because if you look here, you have some uh, large equipment and this is a detail that explains it and we'll cover that on the mechanical notes later. Here's something else I want you to keep in mind. Okay, we turn to this page to look at these two by two ducts that go into the ceiling and we can see it comes off the larger duct and it looks like it's a flexible duct going into there. We're going to go to page M2.2, detail 4, and take a look at that. Okay, so here we are on page M2.2, mechanical details, and we're here at detail 4. Now this is in the top center of the page. And this is that duct that comes down in between those lights. And you can see here from this, you're going to get an idea of the distance that you have above your, your finished ceiling and some of the uh, features of this. So this will let you know if you have to run your, or install your conduits for your lighting or your, your flex whips for your lighting, you need to keep this in mind as far as how this, uh, this detail works. Because now let's go back to page M1.1 and I'm going to point something out to you as to why this could be important. Okay, so we're back at page M1.1 of the mechanical plan and we're looking again at this bottom right corner of the room. There will be a light switch here which will turn these lights on and off. So typically, there will be a junction box somewhere in the room, and then from the junction box will be whips to the lights. These 2 by 4 fixtures, the power feed is either going to be at this end or this end. So what you want to do is to give yourself the most clearance and the easiest installation. And we saw on the last page how there's a little clearance above, then this drops down. So here you might want to drop your fixtures with the power feeds here and here. Put your J box here. And that way your switch will then go to the J box. It will feed the lights here and you have the most clearance. When you're in this room, you might want to turn your fixtures so that the power feed is here. And that way you'll have clearance here. Or you could put it out here where there's no duct and have complete clearance. So those are some things that you can keep in mind and you can gain information from looking at this to give you an idea of how you want to place your junction boxes if the mechanical work is not already done when you get there to do your work. What, this, what a situation like this is a good example of 
is the necessity to coordinate between the different trades the work that has to be done because you've got several people that have to work in the same area and do their job. So you work with each other and you decide what, what areas that uh, each trade is going to use so everybody can put their work in and do a nice clean installation. And when you coordinate and work together with people like this, it takes a few minutes, but you can get the job done right the first time and it will save you hours and hours of rework and a lot of frustration as well. Let's go back now to sheet A, 6.1, our reflected ceiling plan. So we're back to our reflected ceiling plan on sheet A, 6.1. This page was good for us in this lesson because we got to navigate between a couple of different pages. It's nice for us to have that chance, especially when we're in a learning situation as we are. I would have to say that the most important things we're going to be getting from the reflected ceiling plants is going to be the layout of the lights and we're also going to be able to get the finished ceiling height of each of the rooms. And there's some other information and details on how it coordinates with the other trades and their work as well. For our purposes, we are now finished with the reflected ceiling plan. So let's move on to the next sheet. Okay, before we finish with the reflected ceiling plan, I need to point something out to you because I almost led you astray, but I caught myself. And the reason I caught myself is having been going through the prints like we've been on this lesson, something told me, something I told you isn't exactly right. So I just want to point something out and double check it. Okay, here we are on the reflected ceiling plan, and I'm also looking at page. A2.3, the furniture floor plan, at the same time. And we showed you earlier how to look at uh, two pages at the same time on your print and handle them carefully. So please configure your prints this way. On the bottom, we have A2.3, and this is A6.1, the reflected ceiling plan. Now, I talked about laying out your lights here, and with the ductwork also on page M2.2, how I mentioned you might want to put your uh, fixture so that your light feed was right at this end. Well, if we look at our furniture plan, we can see we got like a desk here. And I talked about accessibility and may being able to get on a ladder, so this desk kind of prohibits that. So you may want to put your power feeds over it at this end. And again, you have two feet of clearance with the wall, there's no furniture here. And on a mechanical page on M2.2, we saw that we stop right in between these fixtures here so there's pretty good accessibility there so if you, if you have good support that would might be a better place to put your junction box now also I talked about the restroom area and accessibility there so let me point something else out using these same two sheets let's go up to that section of the plan right now okay so again we're in a situation we have a reflected ceiling plan here right here and this page over here is page A2.3, which is our furniture floor plan. I want you to look here at the break room on the furniture floor plan. And we remember we have this refrigerator, the stove, dishwasher, and the countertop here. Now, if we go to the break room here on the reflected ceiling plan, remember I said you had accessibility over this hard lid in the bathroom through here? Well, I forgot to uh, think about we have all this furniture here. So if you have a ladder, you can't set it up here and reach over here for accessibility. So your junction box might have to be further out over here if you decide to use this area. Or you could be up here using this area where you have a grid ceiling. So that is something that I want you to keep in mind. And again, I kind of dropped the ball a little bit earlier on that, but I caught myself. The good thing is we haven't started building this building yet, so we can take care of that here in planning, and uh, it's not going to be a problem for us. As you're going over the prints, uh, it'll, things will start to stick in your mind and something might say, hey, that's not exactly right, let me cross-reference that again. And so by now, we've learned how to cross-reference and, and double-check for accessibility with furniture placement and things like that. So now at this point in time, I think we can honestly say we're, uh, it's time to move on past the reflected ceiling plan on sheet A6.1. sheet A 9.1 interior details we really don't gain a whole lot of information here that we're going to be using with our work 
What I want to point out with us is number 11 right here. This is a ceiling framing detail. And something like that would be for the soffit for the recessed can lights. And you can kind of get an idea of how it's going to be built. You've got this uh, the framing that you can attach your lights to. But again, that's going to be in place when you go to install your lights. This page, again, is, is not something we really need to look at. It's kind of interesting to see how some of the other trades do some of their work. You can look at it and uh, just get a feel for that, but we're pretty much done with A9.1. A9.2 interior details. We touched on this a little bit earlier. On detail 5 we talked about a light cove detail and we mentioned that on one of the other pages. I believe it was the reflected ceiling plan. But anyway, let's take a closer look at this and see some of the information we can get from this. So if we look at this at a uh, close up of the detail scales, an inch and a half equals one foot. Let's look at key note number five, fluorescent strip light fixture, see electrical drawings. So that will tell you the uh, type of fixture, but it's basically about four feet long, about six inches wide. And there are a, a lot of these fixtures kind of end to end with a little space in between them. Now you may need to get some junction boxes in there to uh, feed these fixtures, but you don't want your junction boxes to be visible. And you have to worry about accessibility as well. So we have some details here. If your junction box is in the back corner here, it's really not going to be accessible from the floor. Let's look at detail one. It says scheduled lay-in ceiling and grid. So this is a ceiling tile which you could pop open and you could get in here and look at. Or you could even, if you had to, put your junction box above here, run your flex through the wall and put, make a small penetration hole here to feed your lighting. And normally with a light setup like this, you'll feed the one fixture, then from end to end between fixtures, you'll have some, uh, some conduit or flex to tie those together. So that's how that would work. But I want to give you a tip here while we're here on since this is a kind of a detail sheet for some framing, even though it has a little bit of electrical work, we talked about putting your junction boxes in here and you have a grid ceiling. When you are doing that, you have to keep in mind accessibility like we spoke of, but also keep in mind ease of installation. And what I mean by that is you may have some kind of an electrical installation where your lights are up higher, but if you can put your junction box lower, go ahead and do that. And I like to use the smallest ladder where I can reach the junction box that's OSHA legal. In other words, you, you can only stand so high on the ladder according to OSHA regulations. Use the smallest one possible and it makes it easier for maintenance work. Now of course you have to have the junction box in a hidden area. But uh, another thing, too, to keep in mind in this, you don't want your junction box too low to this grid. You have to be able to lift this grid up. So your junction box, I would say a minimum of six inches above it. And that's another thing, too. Don't run tile and things like that, or don't run conduit and things like that so close to the tile that these can't be lifted out. So keep that in mind, too. When you're laying things out, you want to have any conduits here or any junction boxes Keep them high enough so that this tile can be lifted out and slid away from there. So you have accessibility and you have ease of installation. Make the job easy on yourself. So that's just a little add-in that we could throw in on that page and I thought it was a, uh, a good time to give you that tip. So that covers page A9.2 for this lesson. Thank you for watching this video please click on the like and subscribe buttons so that I can continue to make more videos like this. If you find this video helpful, please consider donating using the PayPal link below. Thank you.